What is up everybody, I am Alex from Level Up Plus VFX, and today I'm going to show you what I think is the absolute best method to texture paint in Blender. Texture painting is something that I think as every artist goes along their visual effects journey, be it Blender, Maya, 3ds Max, whatever program you are trying to learn, texture painting is one thing that sometimes you just kind of hit a brick wall and you can't understand how to properly, you know, mix two textures together on one object. And today I'm hoping to make that a little bit easier by sharing what I have found to be the most efficient method to do so. So today we're going to create this little path through uh, my grassy plane here. I just have some pillars up here for no reason whatsoever. Uh, but we're going to we're going to go ahead and create this path of dirt through our grass. And I am using Quixel Megascans textures to do this. I just released a tutorial talking about how to get uh, a little bit better quality out of these mega scans. And while we're not using the displacement uh, node today, we're going to be doing a little bit of displacement work. Um, and of course, you can always use the specular if it helps make your grass look a little bit better. Let's take the specular off to show that real quick. If we take that off, it's just a little bit more washed out. So I like having the specular in there. Um, but let's just jump straight into it. I'm going to clear out my mask and I'm going to show you exactly how we did it. All right, so the very first thing we have is our plane, which I've just applied a bit of a noise modifier just to break its shape up a little bit. And I want a dirt path to go through the center of this plane. Now there's many ways you've probably learned to do this. You could use vertex painting, you could use weight painting. And weight painting and the method that I'm gonna show you are very similar, however, I prefer texture painting using the texture paint option that is built into Blender. And for the longest time, I was scared of texture paint because I didn't understand how I was able to actually, you know, create a mask using texture paint. And I had to actually paint on a texture, I had to create an image. It was very weird. And hopefully I'm going to simplify that for you and show you exactly what you need to do in order to get this working properly. So we have this plane uh, and we have our shader editor here. We have our two textures loaded into it. Um, so again, these are just two different different textures that I have and I just copied uh, the, all the information from one texture over to the other one and we're going to mix these together. So how are we going to mix them? Well, let's go ahead and drop in a mix shader node and we'll drop that in after our uh, first texture here and then we're going to plug our other texture into the other end of the mix shader and we're going to add an image texture. Now you don't need to make this super high resolution but when you click new, go ahead and set it to something you could leave it at 1024 or I'll do 2048 and just make sure it's squared uh, because that's how your UV is. And we're going to name this something uh, that we'll remember. So for this, I'm going to call it road texture and we'll just call it road texture. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. I'm going to plug that into my factor. And then while I'm clicked on this road texture image, we're going to switch over to texture paint mode. Now, something that can, might be helpful is switching over to the viewport shading mode instead of using cycles. Uh, you could probably do it in Eevee and it would look just as fine, but I like using the viewport shading mode. Now we need to paint in our road texture. Since we're using this image as our mask for these two shaders, we're just going to need to paint in a line here or a little squiggly line in order to do that. There's a couple ways you can make it look a little bit nicer than just using a default brush, and that's gonna be with these rock brushes. So if you go over to the tool section of your texture paint tab, uh, you'll be able to go down and you'll have this option called texture mask and you're going to want to select a rock brush now um, i have these all loaded in um, i got them online for free from a free resource uh, you might need to do something different and i'll actually have a link to these rock brushes in the description the blend file so if you hold f you can actually change the size of your texture so it might come in too big like it did for me or it might come in too small so i'm actually going to make it a little bit smaller so one thing you're going to want to do is you're going to change the mess mapping from tiled to random because if you leave it at tiled and you start painting on your scene and let's make that brush a little bit thicker just for demonstration purposes you're going to notice that you start getting tiles of how your brush is supposed to look and you can see that doesn't look very natural as we paint through so setting it to random will allow it to be randomly placed as it goes throughout the scene and that can look much more natural uh, and just break up your environment a little bit more. So what I'm going to want to do though is make this a little bit smaller. I want to go through and paint like a curvy path. So I'm going to go ahead and, and go through. And we're going to have this curvy path go through our scene like this. 
and I might want it a little bit stronger, so I'm gonna just go through it again one more time. Now, before you do anything, after you've painted in your texture though, you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and click Save All Images. This will save this image that you made as an actual file, because if you were to close Blender or refresh the tab or something reset, you would actually lose this image mask. You wanna always make sure you're clicking Save All Images. And once it's grayed out, you know that it's currently saved. So looking through it in Cycles, we can clearly see that our road texture is now going through our scene. It looks nice. Uh, because we're mixing shaders, we're getting the bump from each image uh, separately and they're not overlapping or anything like that. And it does look nice. However, I think we can take this a step further and make it a little bit more realistic. I want to inset this road a little bit into the ground, more like it was carved out of the grass. It's not just something that's you know, on the same level as the grass. And there's a couple ways you could do this. You could do this with a displacement node in your shader network, but there's a better way to do this, and that's using your modifiers. You could also do this in geo nodes, I'm sure, but using it in modifiers is easier. And by doing it in modifiers or geo nodes, you're freeing yourself up to add a displacement map later if you wanted to add in your displacement. So I'm gonna go ahead and hit add modifier, and I'm gonna choose displace. Then I'll go over to the settings icon on the texture, and in this settings dropdown, I'm gonna go ahead and choose the road texture as my image. Now that I've done that, we'll see that it's tiling all weirdly, and that's because we're using local coordinates and we want to be using UV coordinates. So go ahead and select that and it will update. And because the geometry is so low resolution, we need to actually just add a little bit more. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in a subdiffusion surface modifier, and I'm gonna put that on top of my road uh, displacement, and we'll set this to something like three. Once we've done that, we can clearly see that the road is starting to bulge out of the ground, but I actually want it in the negative direction, so I'm going to go ahead and set the strength to negative one, and we'll see that it's dipping into the ground now. Now, obviously, I think I made my map a little too big, so I'm going to go ahead and shrink that by going into texture paint mode, which I'm already in, uh, and I'm going to set this to black. I'm just going to shrink the area that we want to remove it by uh, just a little bit. So again, this is why you'd probably want to use the uh, good old, you know, shader view because it'll take forever if you were to use the normal viewport. You might need to disable your mask as well, but it looks like it's working good for me. So I'm gonna just shrink this in just a little bit, make it a little less uh, dramatic. And, and as you can see, our displacement map is updating as we do this. And I like that, I think that looks pretty good. Um, it's, you know, it doesn't have the greatest fall off that it could, so we can, we can lower the fall off if we wanted, or if we needed to, we could bring this up and make it sharper. You know, you can do a lot with this. So I think, you know, cranking this white value up to just match the size of the roads a little bit more uh, seems seems pretty nice. Now, you could also go into your displacement uh, modifier, go into the texture, and play with color settings. So if you wanted less contrast or more contrast, you know, to make the road really, really dig in there, uh, you can do that. I'm going to set this back to 1. And I think that is probably pretty good. I like how that road, you know, is now sunken into the ground. So let's go ahead and look through it through our cycles viewports again, and then we're gonna save our images. And just like before, I'm gonna go ahead and click save images to make sure that we have stay up to date. And there we go, we have a road that's digging pretty nicely into our environment. But yeah, that's personally the best method I've found for texture painting. Uh, it allows you a lot of control when it comes to, you know, how many textures you can add because it's, you know, theoretically infinite. It's just how many images you can save. Just always remember to be saving all images and you should be pretty safe. Um, something you might accidentally do is you might paint a splotch. Like I think I have a splotch of texture here uh, that I don't want. But I, I'd go in, I'd paint that out, but it's going to slow my computer down, so I'm not going to bother with that for now. The really cool thing about this texture, because it's an image saved on your computer, is you could go into something like Scatter, and we could say that we want to scatter some objects. So I'm going to go over to my Asset Browser, and I'm going to choose uh, some grass. Let's, let's find a grass patch here. So I'm going to choose this grass patch, and I'm going to select my plane. And you need to be in object mode in order to use Scatter 5. So I'm going to go ahead and select my plane. And I have my object selected. I'm going to go ahead and hit Scatter Objects. I need to add it to my scene first. But I'm going to go ahead and click Scatter Objects. And once we've done that, we can see that there's not enough grass on here and it's the wrong size. So let's quickly fix that. Now we have all this grass on our object, but we really only want it in the grass. So we're gonna go ahead and fix that using this mask that we were provided earlier. And I'm gonna go over to my culling masks and I'm gonna select image and we can just go ahead and type in road. And we have our road texture here. So I'll go ahead and select that. 
And now, suddenly, our road texture is the thing that's masking out our grass. And this is another good way to see where you might have some semi-transparent areas. So if I set this to four, just to max out the scene, so as I can see, you know, the grass is kind of leaking onto my road a little bit more than I want. So I'm probably going to use that texture mask and I'm just to clean it up a little bit. So I'm back into my, you know, material view node. I'm gonna make sure I have my plane selected and the image selected, go back to my texture paint mode. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm just gonna paint, you know, this a little bit stronger just to make sure that the grass is properly, you know, being separated from our road here. So let's just go through something like this and we can see as we go through it disappears and then we're cleaning it up just a little bit more so there's some areas because this is not a solid texture you know that it's going to leave grass like tufts in the middle of the road but actually i think that's kind of realistic you know the grass isn't going to be fully gone from the road there are little pieces of grass that will creep back onto your road so you know if you wanted to you could just make sure that you had a full you know plain brush that has no opacity in the middle but i think that looks pretty good. So after cleaning up the road texture a little bit, I just went ahead and removed my texture mask and I painted in the areas where there was grass, you know, kind of in the middle of the road that I didn't want. I wanted to show you one more thing that's really cool with this, which is if we go out of texture paint mode and again, make sure you're saving all your images once you're done painting and we go back to our object mode, we can pop over back to scatter five and we can do something a little bit cool. So let's go ahead and find some of these like wasteland clusters. I think these will look really good on the road. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and I'm gonna change this to browser selection just so I don't have to drag it into my scene. And once it's selected, I'm gonna go ahead and click scatter assets once again. And we're gonna make sure that again, we use our image attribute and we're gonna use road. And we're just gonna wanna invert it. So we're gonna, oh, whoops, road. <laughs> there we go. And we're going to want to invert it by hitting this little invert button. So now it's just being scattered on our road. So now I can randomize the scale, find something that I want. So I just want a couple little tufts like that. I think that'll be good. And let's go ahead and we'll save and we'll see how that looks. I can't say for certain that this is the official way that studios do it, but it's got to be pretty close because this is by far one of the simplest methods for, you know, uh, controlling your textures, your object distribution, and so much more. Uh, and it's just this method that I love to use. But that's all there is to it. You know, I've been Alex from Level Up Plus VFX. If you liked this video, go ahead and leave a like. If you want to see more Blender tutorials or new tutorials, which are coming soon, go ahead and stick around for that. And I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.